ready for the one and only gentleman live from Houston, Texas. H-Town. It's the go-to girl, the go-to professional girl. comedian, professional. TV producer, and TV founder producer. of MarryDate.com. It's millionaire matchmaker, millionaire matchmaker. Amber. Matchmaker Amber Neal. It is Merry Date Monday, Mania Monday, but it is Coffee Monday. So yes, <laughs> I'm a little late because I needed my coffee today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you to Lil Wanda Turner for hooking me up with some instant coffee. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, girl. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because I was just, I'm not a coffee drinker. My parents drink coffee so freaking much. It's just the smell of it is, is ugh. but anyway, the, but you know, the, the cool thing about it is, is that I asked him, cause I, you know, being the great friend that I am, I, I picked him up some instant coffee and he hadn't touched it. So I was like, okay, maybe, I don't know. So I don't know coffee, but then, well, but then you got this one. And you raved about it, like. My other raved. thing is, is that I really okay. So I drink my morning in the coffee. My morning in the coffee. You see why I need coffee? It's Monday, guys. <laughs> I need to drink my coffee in the mornings. Yeah. And so generally speaking, once I'm caffeinated, unless it's a long day, I don't drink caffeine again, except for the Dr. Peppers that I drink throughout the day. So I'm, you know, like I won't be drinking coffee until it's like. Uh, hour. <laughs> and once it becomes a uh, hour, then I'm like, okay, pick me up. So you don't get to see that very often because I'm usually very caffeinated and ready to go. Hashtag hey. I, believe, I believe DP. Guys, we have a great show for you today. Uh, we are going to be talking about signs your relationship may be coming to an end. Oh, what, snap. What a great day to talk about it on Monday. Because, you know, a lot of times couples get together over the weekends. That's when a lot of the fights happen because it is back to the common interest thing, right? Right. A lot of couples fight over the weekends because it's like one couple's in the mood for romance, one couple's tired, one person's tired, one person uh, is trying to take care of their family, one person's working. So when you don't have time for romance, when you don't make time for your relationship, don't be surprised when it falls apart. So today we are going to talk about signs, your relationship may be coming to an end, and we have some really fun, eight clever psychology facts that we're going to start the show off with today. I like psychology. Yes. What are you doing? Taking me to school today? <laughs> always, always, guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we are super excited because we actually launched Houston's first private social club for couples this month, MarriedAte.com. We have some more information coming up about that in the break for you to check out, but don't you just love the host couples? I really, I do. I really like, we do. have some really great host couples, you know. Um, the Adolfs, particularly, like yes. every time I think they, they come to mind, like they are the most outgoing, the most fun, mm-hmm. the most social. And then, of course, you know, we have now we have the Destins, we have you the know Destins. what I'm saying? Formerly known as Sugar Bacon, yes. but we have the Destins who. Um, what I really love about them is they really like when they walk around, you feel that power. Uh-huh. You know, they, That's they, a power couple. Exactly. They're they're a true power couple. So I love the emotions that I get just feeling them in the hallway. You know, it's like it's just like that uplifting yes. just just seeing them stand next to each other. They got that posture to just like I I'm going to rule this place. That's how that goes. And that's the thing about it is, guys, you want to be really careful who you allow into your circle when you are a part of a relationship because not all relationships are healthy. Not all relationships are what you aspire to be like. And so, you know, we have so many great host couples, uh, too many to name, but go get more information. We're actually going to create a new tab on the Meridate website where you can actually, it's going to be all about our host couples. So you can really right. get to know them, meet them a little bit more. Um, and if you're interested in joining Meridate, go to Meridate.com. We're doing 30 to 50 events a month in person. And hopefully, if everything goes well, we will have 10 virtual events on our calendar for August. So right, exactly. It, it's a slow build, but we'll eventually get to about 50 a month virtually as well. So our goal is to have 100 events a month. Um, that you can choose from, and you're like, wow, that's a lot, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, because we all have different interests. You know exactly. What I mean? And that's something that, you know, I was actually just talking to a potential member the other day. They were saying, like, how can you, you know, why do you do so many events? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, think about it this way. I may do a bar night one night, and in the same, you know, but you may not be a bar couple. 
Exactly. You may not even like drink. to drink. Yeah. Exactly. So on the same night, instead of saying bar, we'll go and offer like a movie night or, exactly. you know, a cute little date night in the park. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just to go and, and open up the spectrum to all couples. You know, we that's that's the biggest thing about Mary Day is we are one of the most diverse companies. You know, we want everybody is welcome. Mm -hmm. All we're trying to do mm -hmm. is keep the love there and the yeah. date there, you know? So what we want to do is tell everybody love is love. You can love whoever you want to love, you know? <laughs> like, we have no judgment here. So that's why it, we keep it so open for so many different possibilities, you know? Whether you are uh, a heterosexual couple, uh, whether you are a... Newly couple, a, a long time couple, whether you're young or older, mm -hmm. there's events for you, you know, because mm -hmm. I know it's, it's different from the age ranges too, you know, a, a young person's not going to want to do the same thing that an older person is going to want to do. Which brings the point of um, how the events are, this is what happens naturally in a social club. You basically wind up filtering down, it's a big filtering process, so that you meet couples that are like-minded, have the same interests, nobody wants to get drugged to something they don't want to go to, <laughs> right. uh, especially in a couple, that's one of the hardest things it being in the couple itself it's already hard enough for the couple to agree on something to do but then to find the other couples as well but what's going to happen is naturally going to filter by age as well too now you will see all ages at all events right but the thing about it is it will naturally filter age group by what it is usually. So normally anything that's like a younger event, the bars and, and the weekend, the, the live events, the live music, those sort of things. I mean, everybody really like music. Right. But when you get into like the adrenaline junkie stuff, that's when <laughs> you're going to get the younger people. When you go to the wine tastings and the uh, the cooking classes and the you know the different th the things that are something that people a little bit older tend to migrate right. to. Now, no, trust me, I know there's 85 year old people jumping on a perfectly good airplane, <laughs> but all we're saying is that it kind of naturally filters, and you're going to meet everybody. And here's the thing, guys. Let me say this one thing too: if you are a young couple, go make friends with the older couples because there's so much wisdom. Right. In that, especially right. if they are the host couple. To be clear, the host couples are have one job. Uh, they are the example. They when we screen for host couples, these host couples are the example of what a real marriage is. Have they had problems? Maybe we don't know. They've worked it out, but from what I can tell, they've at least gone to therapy and figured it out. Right, and I know I can tell you just from the testimonies of some of the actual host couples. You know, yeah. Some of them have come out straight up said that they have not had it easy. It was not a, an easy road, but they never gave up. Mm -hmm. They never even thought about divorce. No. Instead, they said, how are we going to fix this? That's right. And that's what we're looking... That's that's the whole purpose behind Mary Day. Is the, it's the mental health behind it. How can we fix your relationship to help it stay healthy? One of the things we're going to talk about in a future show this week, it's been on my mind to really talk about... I saw this uh, lady on TikTok who was saying, quit glorifying your grandmother's toxic relationship. And so what she meant by that is that back in the day, we always talk about women were stuck uh, because they didn't have the money, the education, the resources. Um, and she said, and this was exactly what she said. She goes, if Harriet Tubman could free the slaves in the 1800s, you could have left that relationship. And I always talk, I always think about that because my grand, my mom comes from a dysfunction. My grandpa's alcoholic. My grandma uh, had left him in 19, in the 40s when she had no money, no education, and had to leave all of her kids with her ex, and he wound up giving them away. So she oh, lost wow. all of her kids. So my mom's really suffered from that. And it makes me think about that. So we've got to stop. We always think about our grandparents. Well, they stayed together forever. But the difference was back in the day, they stayed in abuse. They stayed in mistreatment. Right. Most of the time, the men had another family on the other side and of town. I mean, you have to think about the, the different times. You know, women didn't even have rights back then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times, like, they had no choice but to stay where they were at. Because it's not like they could get a job. Yeah. It's not like they were able to get an education to pay for anything right. to get a job or anything like that. So, you know, I, I can understand why the older generations were forced to yeah. stay in relationships that they didn't want to stay in, whether they were healthy or not. Yeah. They just didn't have the options. Versus nowadays, I mean, women are more independent than men are now. 
Yeah, <laughs> and, and maybe that's the problem because I think everybody's confused. But we do want to talk about that part of the toxicity. The, the difference was in our generation and our grandparents' generation is we are, we're focusing on mental health. That is what Married Aid is about. Let's focus on the mental health. Let's not be our grandmothers and sweep it under the rug and just, we don't talk about it. We keep our family secrets, it, you know, and you're only as sick as your secret. So when we come back, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to introduce you to some of the host couples right now. Check them out. Let their, listen to their story and be inspired. And we have a singles event this Thursday coming up. So when we come back, we're going to talk about eight really cool psychology tricks. We'll be right back after this. Woo! Meridate, Houston's first private social club for couples. Chris and I met on MySpace. Uh, we started doing music together first, and then we became really good friends. And we were friends for about five years. And then we started dating each other in 2008. Uh, by February 2009, we were engaged. And by November 2009, we were married. Um, we have three children together that we have raised. And uh, we have traveled the world together. And. Um, eaten some of the best food in the world and collectively have just built up an amazing network of friends and family and a circle of people that we just love and care about and they continue to motivate and we continue to motivate them. We build our energy on our relationship um, with the energy that we can give to other people and the effect that we can have on other people's lives. And We're going on 12 years strong this year through all the obstacles and the goods and the bads. We're still together and we're here to share our story. Join Meridate today by visiting www.meridate.com. It's your girl, Millionaire Matchmaker, and you know what? How we do it? We got a huge singles event coming up one week from today. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, it is. And I'm your boy DJ Houston, and we're here to tell you about our singles event. We're doing speed dating in the dark, aka glow in the dark speed dating. And we're bringing you musical love chairs. You know how, how fun. fun it is to bump somebody out of their chair. Get out of my chair. You get out of my chair. Hey, <laughs> make sure you go and check out our event at the Ember Neal Show on Facebook. Tickets are live and come hungry. We have pasta, salad, and fruit included in the ticket price and it's BYOB. Come for Ooh. the networking red carpet and fun. And hey, is there any price you won't pay for love? Exactly. So make sure y'all guys go check out that event at The Amber Neal Show on Facebook and we will see you there. Meridate. Houston's first private social club for couples. Hello, I'm Larry. And I'm Denise. And, and we, we are, are the Scots. Scots. Denise and I have been married for almost a year now, and it has been a thrill. Yes, it has. We are always honeymooning and always on the go, doing something as a couple. And that's what I love about my wife, Denise. She is full of energy, she is full of excitement, and she is full of love. And I love you for allowing me to shine my love in your life. And I'm super ready to share a lifetime of memory with you. She's my wife. He's my husband. She's my friend. He's my friend. She's my everything. He's my everything. She's my queen. He's my king. She's my lifetime. He's my lifetime. This is what makes a happy marriage. And we both believe what God put together. No one can ever tear apart. Join Meridate today by visiting www.meridate.com. Meridate, Houston's first private social club for couples. It all started when one of Jen's friends brought her out to a bar and she didn't want to go out. She saw me and said, um, she's going to marry that guy. Her friends thought it was funny. The next night we met, this was two days before Christmas, and then we've been together ever since, that was 2007. We hung out that night, didn't even know each other's names. And then eventually we started hanging out and got together, got engaged January of 20, or 2008. Um, got married March, April of 2009. 
and we have two kids and a third that we just had a month and a half ago in May. So now we have three kids, own a business, been together for 14 years now and no turning back from there. We, uh, everybody said we wouldn't make it. We've been through trials and tribulations, made sure that we always stuck by each other's side and took care of everything we're supposed to. You know, we've been tested a lot. We have been tested hard. Um, other than that, we have enjoyed life. We travel. We enjoy spending time with each other, with each other 24 hours a day. Never a dull moment, never separation. Um, it's actually been great. Join Mary Date today by visiting www.marydate.com. Hey guys, welcome back into the Amber Neal Show. It is Marinate Mondays with my co-host DJ Houston. So I think I forgot to introduce you the last time. You know, I think you just walked in. This I did. I kind of, I kind of just walked in, and we were like, "I need coffee." So plus, I'm just kind of like, you know, if you don't know who we are by now, Google me. <laughs> All right, Who's guys. the guy in the Ebony Neal Show? I know. Um, all right, guys. Today we got a really fun topic for y'all. We're talking about eight really cool, clever psychology facts. And we're going to be talking about signs that your relationship may be coming to an end in the bottom of the hour. But first, let's jump into this because, you know, this, the psychology facts are really interesting, right? These little things can really make a difference in how you approach every area of your life. So number one is people who lose their virginity... After 19 or later, I'm already out of this one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> tend to have a higher income, education, and a healthier relationship later in life than those people who lose their virginity young. So that explains our life a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was a little young when I lost my virginity. <laughs> But that's interesting because, you know, the first thing I thought about when I saw that, I was like, I think about the kids in school that maybe not been as popular or maybe shy, introverted. They weren't as good with, you know, romance and trying to let people know they like them. So I think it's one of those things that gives you time to focus on other things in your life, like your academics and your school and, and your hobbies and things like that, instead of just when you're a horny teenager, all you think about is getting laid. I was so. going to say, you know, I, I feel like that the <laughs> reason that they're probably more successful and more, you know, have the higher income and stuff is because they aren't focusing on sex all the time. Right. Like that, you know, I mean, come on, the <laughs> second you have sex, it, you want more. More. You uh, always want more. Yes. And these people, they don't know what they're missing, so they're not even thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I cannot, I just... See, and, I'm the opposite. I have this weird thought. Like, anytime I go to a funeral... <laughs> We're going to think I'm so crazy. But, y'all, you know, even in high school, my friends, I was always talking about sex. I started matchmaking people in ninth grade. And my friends would say, do you ever talk about anything about sex? And I'm like, no. And it turns out I was president of Future Homemakers of America. Y'all see where I'm going with this. I'm a matchmaker <laughs> now. So uh, sex has been a very big part of my life my whole life. Uh, but it's so interesting because I always think about when people die, I wonder when their last time they had sex was. And I wonder if they knew it was their, last, be their last time. time. You, know, my, you know what I mean? When you meet somebody, it's like, when was your last time? And were you satisfied with your last time? It's kind of when you break up in a relationship. It's like, was the last time really good? Because normally if your sex life is good, but then that last time, it wasn't as good as it usually is. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, m me personally, the way I want to go is having sex. You know what I'm me saying? Too. Like that's, that's, yes. I don't want to wonder if I missed out or if this is the last time. Because now every time I have sex, I'm going to be like, wait, is this, am I going to have an aneurysm <laughs> right now? Like, it, this better be the best dang sex I ever have, you know? And it's hard because living in the hookup culture, you know, we. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving my, I'm over call. here like giving myself away over here, but you know it can be really <laughs> bad sometimes. Like yeah. you know, especially if you go and get that strange all the time, and you're just like, oh, sometimes strange is really good and really fun and and really hot. But I don't care what nobody says. Nothing's better than love. No, no there's no sex better than when you're in love. I, mean, I, I don't mean, care what nobody says. I mean, yes, hook up, you know, strange. It's, it's, cool. it's hard to say because I guess because I haven't. You know them over time. You can please them more. You but, like they like more. You try new uh, things more. But if it's a one time thing, that's just like going to marriage and trying to say you can judge one event. You can't judge somebody's sexual ability I'm going by to, having sex with I'm one just going to say sometimes, though. Oh, sometimes. Sometimes having sex with a random yeah. stranger is so Super much more. Hot. Fun because sometimes they're more willing to do the things that you like to do. You right. know, like um, sometimes it's easier to find 
freaks at our one night stands. Like sex in public. Exactly. I saw a meme the other day that said, if you're not willing to have sex at a family function, you're not for me. That, 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 is, that should be my motto. I'm like, if I had if a dating profile, that would be my that If you're not willing to fuck me in my old bedroom <laughs> while all of my parents and family are in the kitchen during Thanksgiving, then we can't. See, you see why we're so good <laughs> But you know, enough about us. <laughs> enough about our little dirty little secrets. Yeah. But you know, sex sex is important. But I think I think the more you get to know somebody, I even had a lover once who would rate his sex or sexual ability. He's like, "Oh, you got that D dick today. Oh, you're gonna get that C plus tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna get that B." And I'm like, I, but the crazy part, he like as we dated for months, you know, like almost a year, it was crazy. He was it was true. Over time, he became better and better in bed. Like. So, I don't know. But, you know, because you know how it is. Like, I'm not giving all my ch- my best ability skills to until you earn that. Some I mean, of them are earned. Right? Yeah, right, 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 right. But I guess I, I can't really speak on that aspect <laughs> because I haven't really, I mean, I haven't found my true love yet. So, I haven't really made yeah. love to nobody. I've just had Ooh, sex with somebody. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, so, and that kind of brings us on to, you know, our second psychology fact, which I kind of find a little... Um, a little okay, like this. This kind of reminds me of like yawning. You know how they say yeah. yawning is contagious. Right. So this one right here says being un uh, being unable to get somebody off of your mind means it's because you're also on their mind. I've heard that so many years, right? And so I just really wonder, from a psychology standpoint, how do they determine that? Right. Like how? How, how do you? I mean, because think about it. There's stalkers who think about you all the time. Doesn't mean I'm thinking about There's them. There's stalkers that know what's going on in your life more than you do. But that don't mean you're thinking about them, so... Well, it's kind of like that old saying where, you know, like, if your ears are burning, somebody. that somebody's talking about you. Yeah. It's like, how how do you really know? How, how you would your body that? know that somebody's Maybe talking about you? Maybe you just need a Q-tip. Maybe it's nasty. <laughs> maybe you need to clean your ass out. But that's the thing about it is maybe it, it's when there's mutual love. Like... Because I think there has to be like a line drawn. I think I think the they should preface this by saying when you're in love with someone, then and and you y'all are in love with each other, then yeah, if you you know if you can't get your but but just anybody like hmm. yeah exactly because I also you know um, hold on let me make sure it's not real quick. so I also <laughs> heard you know um, when you yawn you know they they say it's contagious. But they say it's only contagious if you have emotional connection with somebody. Interesting. I, well, what I heard about yawning is that if you yawn, and if someone yawns in front of you and you don't yawn as well, you're a psychopath. But we'll see. And I mean, I and that's why I'm like, how can we prove these kind of things? Like, Who you know, said? Like, we but... need to get to the bottom of this, right? <laughs> Who wrote this? If you're thinking about me and I'm thinking about you, hmm, interesting. But that I think there is some... Truth to that. Some truth. I think it goes, for me, when I, just in my own personal experience, I think it's more about, like, when you break up. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, when you're going through a breakup, and they can't stop thinking about you, and you can't stop thinking about them, because look how many people break up, and they don't really, you don't know what you got till it's gone. I mean, I guess we can kind of put this in, under the law of attraction, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's, if you're thinking about it, you know, clearly you're manifesting you're that, manifesting you know? It. Because it's just like, for example, this is totally crazy, but um, the other day, my ex just came across my mind, you know, just one of those random mm-hmm. things. Like, I think mm-hmm. I, I think I heard, watched a, an ad that just kind of reminded me of him. And I was like, so I started just thinking like, oh, that poor bastard. And then the next thing I did, I was at Walmart and I ran into him. And I was like, damn you, universe. No I was like, that I did not want to see him. I was, I, I literally said that poor bastard. <laughs> you know? Once you become aware of how powerful your thoughts are and that the universe does not know what you want and always knows what you think about, Careful what you think about, because that mofo going to show up and be like, bam, here I am. You know? <laughs> hey, I need to go to Walmart, too, okay? Uh, I'm so, you know, I'm literally, I was so lucky that I was just, like, able to, whoa, and I ran the other way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to run into my exes. I ain't got time for that drama. All right, guys. So today we're talking about really cool eight clever psychology facts. Uh, number three is that the amount of stress that a person has when they lose their phone is similar to a terrorist attack. I mean, I feel like I feel like a heart attack. I don't know about oh. a terrorist attack, but I definitely feel like it's when you get that moment and you can't find your. That has happened to me. That is the worst feeling in the world. Because if you're like me, I have everything in my phone. Honestly, facts, because I that's that's how I feel. Like, 
I have everything on my phone from my passwords to my cards yes. to my schedule to just my life. Everything that controls my life goes through my phone. You know what I mean? Yes. So I do, I, I can kind of see that. I do get like very scared sometimes. Like if I lose my, just, just misplacing my phone. I can't find my phone. Where's my phone? Like I start panicking. Seriously. So it, it, it's Are a little. Uh, we can, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, the phone lines are going to be open. We're going to go ahead and open those up. Maybe we'll do it when the, at the bottom of the hour. We'll come back. We'll give you the 800 number. When we come back, you guys can call in and join us on the next conversation. Uh, signs that your relationship may be coming to an end so that you can also chime in on that. Uh, but what is number four? So it uh, eight clever psychology facts that we're talking about today. Yes. Uh, tell people your deepest secrets while looking into their eyes. eyes. Oh, that yeah. is so cute. They will feel an instant attraction. It didn't work with Dick, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Amber, I'm sorry, but you're barking up and the wrong tree. And pretty eyes, too. Did you know that only 2% of the world's population has green eyes? Really? 2%. Uh, you know, and um, and all people with blue eyes are tied to the same. So then, I was gonna say. So then, what do I come out as? Because my eyes are hazel, so they change colors. They change it, it between fall, blue, it falls gray, into a and, green. and right. Yeah. I was like, because they mostly are green. Because there's they, only one recessive color, and that's blue. And, they, and then I saw a study yesterday. It said all, all blue eyed people are tied to some genetic mutation tied in, to Denmark. And so every single person with blue eyes is tied to one genetic mutation. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I always found that interesting because my daughter's biracial and she had blue eyes when she was born. I'm like, how in the world does a biracial child have blue eyes? And then I found out the only recessive color is blue, that green is equal to brown. I mean, nobody ever really believes me because um, my green eyes actually come from my dad's side, of the, mm -hmm. which is the, the Latin side of my family. You I know? believe that because when you look at science, green and brown are equally dominant. And that back before, I think it was like, I don't know, 10,000 years ago. I don't know what the, I forgot what it said in the article. But there was no such thing as blue eyes. That was a mutation. That was an, that was something that mutated. Uh, so technically, we're all supposed to have dark eyes, but actually, the thing is, is that green is equivalent to brown. So That's, that as far as dominant sense. or recessive colors. Um, okay, so what number are we on now? Number, number five. five. When telling a lie, add an embarrassing part to it because it makes it more believable. Like, I'll Why give you an example. Why are you giving example. my secrets away? I'll give you an example. I'm running late because there's an accident on the road. And I um, somebody flipped me off. And then I flipped them off. And then I realized it was my boss. You know what I mean? Just something silly to make us seem like something bad happened to you in it. Because it's already something bad, right? You're talking to teenage Jacob here. I was the best <laughs> deceiver of them all because I knew how to do that. You know, you have to really, if you're going to lie about it, you got to make it more personal, you know, something that you can be embarrassed by so that way people really believe you yeah. more. Because nobody's going to believe, or nobody believes that you're going to intentionally tell a lie about yourself that's embarrassing. Exactly. So, you know, adding that little embarrassing trait, you're kind of like, uh, he must be telling the truth. Uh, so... A clever psychology facts. We are on number six, and it's and number six is scent may be one factor in one's attraction to another, and that is um, like the pheromone party. Yeah, we did the pheromone party back. Oh my god, I don't remember what year that was. That was a long time ago, but it landed us on twenty twenty with Barbara Walters. Okay, uh, because they say that they have proven animals have pheromones. The jury is still out if humans have pheromones, but come on, man. Let me tell you. You can walk up and smell somebody yes. and go, but, yes. you, but you know what you're smelling for? Is you're smelling for the best possible offspring. You're literally trying to smell, hmm. you're smelling their your, their DNA. You're trying to say, you know what? I Because it's a hard wire. It, it, and they said this is true in straight and gay couples that we still select to our pheromones to to produce, we're looking for the best genetic outcome with our offspring, even when that's not possible. Well, before we move on to the next one, I'm going to say that legitimately, I don't care what science says, I know people have pher uh, pheromones because my one of my exes, like, Never had to ever wear like deodorant or anything like that because wow. he just naturally always like it was a musk. It wasn't like oh you know you smell freshly clean, but it was yeah. a musk. But it always smelled good. Like you mm -hmm. just you I, I was always like oh That's my god. That's funny you say it's so that. Weird. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when the news came out and interviewed me that at the event. I just had a car accident and I had a concussion. So I, I, I said the wrong word, but the message was the same. Um, I gave the example of, you know, when you're in love with somebody and they go out for, let's say they go out for a run, 
And then you're like, man, you stink so good. But that's what it is yeah. because even when they stink, when you're in love, man, you <laughs> you like get, how, how drink your dirty bath water. Oh, uh, like right? some people, let me smell them sweaty balls. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> not never said that. <laughs> uh, we're gonna jump into these last two real quick because we gotta take a break. Number seven: Some researchers fear that technology, particularly social media, is going to be the death of all emotional connection. It is causing disconnections instead of connections. This is I completely agree. We talk about this a lot on the show, you know, how social media is feeling, is pushing people more and more or less um, emotionally with other people. That, that connection that they're supposed to get when you talk to people face to face um, isn't there anymore. It affects your job when you were applying for a job. Right. right. What's the last one? So we that brings us to number eight of the eight clever psychology facts. If you want to find love, Take a dog with you when you're going on a date. I love it. Use it as an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. oh, that's actually a really good, uh, <laughs> I love that. really good idea. You know, I does. I guess you, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dog. You can bring your cat if you want to. But <laughs> bring your dog. Uh, all right. Well, we will be back after these uh, announcements from our sponsors, and when we come back, we are talking signs that your relationship may be coming to an end. Uh oh. We'll see you after these commercial breaks. Meridate, Houston's first private social club for couples. It all started when one of Jen's friends brought her out to a bar and she didn't want to go out. She saw me and said um, she's going to marry that guy. Her friends thought it was funny. The next night we met, this was two days before Christmas, and then we've been together ever since. That was 2007. We hung out that night, didn't even know each other's names. And then eventually we started hanging out and got together, got engaged January of 20 or 2008, um, got married March, of April of 2009, and we have two kids and a third that we just had a month and a half ago in May. So now we have three kids, own a business, been together for 14 years now, and no turning back from there. We uh, everybody said we wouldn't make it. We've been through trials and tribulations made sure that we always stuck by each other's side and took care of everything we're supposed to. You know, we've been tested a lot. We have been tested hard. Um, other than that, we have enjoyed life. We travel. We enjoy spending time with each other, with each other 24 hours a day. Never a dull moment, never separation. Um, it's actually been great. Join Mary Date today by visiting www.marydate.com. Guys, it's your girl Millionaire Matchmaker, and you know what? How we do it? We got a huge singles event coming up one week from today. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, it is, and I'm your boy DJ Houston, and we're here to tell you about our singles event. We're doing speed dating in the dark, aka glow in the dark speed dating, and we're bringing you musical love chairs. You know how, how fun. fun it is to bump somebody out of their chair. Get out of my chair. You get out of my chair. Hey, <laughs> make sure you go and check out our event at the Ember Neal Show. Show on Facebook. Tickets are live and come hungry. We have pasta, salad, and fruit included in the ticket price and it's BYOB. Come for Ooh. the networking red carpet and fun. And hey, is there any price you won't pay for love? Exactly. So make sure y'all guys go check out that event at The Amber Neal Show on Facebook and we will see you there. Meridate. Houston's first private social club for couples. We are the Adolfs. Willie and Tequila. We are blessed and honored to be asked to be a host couple for Mary Day. We have been a part of each other's lives for so many years. We party hard and worked harder. We have four adult children and two fur babies. We are entrepreneurs and we work together for over 20 years. We have been married since 1999 through thick and thin, sickness and health, through troubles and triumphs, struggles and all victories. But God, we built it up. We built it up. We, we built, built it up. up and, and now, now we're solid. Solid as a rock. We are made off.
Join Mary Date today by visiting www.marydate.com. Hey guys, welcome back into the Amber Neal Show. It is Mary Date Monday with my co-host DJ Houston. Sup, 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 sup. <laughs> Man, it's another day here in the H and it is a hot, hot, hot one. Yes, it is. Woo. I am sick of this heat. I'm but just then again, it's not raining. Uh, well, actually, I would rather it be raining right now you to did? help cool it down. Because it just starts freezing in here. It's crazy. Well, again, I said I'd rather be cold than hot because yeah. at least being cold, I can put more clothes on. Yeah, but unfortunately, society won't let me take clothes off yes. when I get too hot. All right, guys. Today we have a really good show for y'all. If y'all missed the first half, we were talking about eight really cool psychology tricks that will help you in, in all areas of your life. But now... We've got to give y'all, it's the Merry Date Monday. Part of being a couple is understanding what went wrong in your last relationship. And as we said before, the person that is toxic will jump right into a brand new relationship. And the person that's healthy will stay and heal. There's no way you can get around that. Putting a band-aid on it will only cause your next relationship to fail just the same way, right? Right. So today we're going to talk about eight, some, uh, not eight, we're going to talk about, uh, yeah, eight signs that your relationship may be coming to an end. Number oh, one. Oh, oh. I'm like, yes. cue up the Pac-Man death sound. <laughs> I think this is going to be probably the, the biggest indicator of all of these because if you can't talk, if you don't have communication, if there's no understanding, then number one is that most of your conversations turn into full-blown arguments. Ooh, this right here. I Honestly, all, every single one of my relationships that have ever ended have ended because of pretty much this, you know, like we can't talk. There's no conversation anymore. Every mm -hmm. time I, even if it starts off as a nice civil conversation, somewhere it takes a ugly left turn and we're both yelling at each other and arguing and fighting. And that's why now, you know, that I'm more healed and understanding, I now look for that as a, as a huge red flag for me. You know, yeah. if I'm just having a normal conversation with somebody and I can't even finish what I'm saying before I'm getting cut off and their voice is starting to get a little higher and a little louder than mine, you know, those are, those are signs right there that I have to find something different, you know, back off. Yeah, um, it makes me wonder when people do that, when it turns into a full blown argument, it, it didn't, it wasn't always like that. You didn't always communicate like that. What is it about it that turns it into a full-blown argument? And that is when people get into their ego. When people get into their ego and they no longer are serving the relationship as a unit, as a couple, as a one body, and they start separating themselves into, I want this and I want that. And then, then we become children. That's what really happens. Our inner child starts acting a damn fool <laughs> and starts throwing a temper tantrum. Oh, you want to get loud? Okay, well, I'm going to get loud. Oh, you want to cheat? Okay, I'm going to cheat. And the thing is, two wrongs never make a right. And we're not saying that one person is right, but be the peacemaker. Try to be the peacemaker. Try to make an effort. Seek out counseling. Seek out mediation. Seek out some help. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you, this is only going to escalate. Each time, it's going to blow up bigger and bigger and bigger. And the worst thing you can do when you're trying to resolve conflict is throw in their face everything that you've already resolved. Once it's resolved, Ooh. shut the hell up. Quit talking about that shit. Okay, and that's 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 the spot right there that I'm learning still, you know, because sometimes I'm mm. still that got to get that last word or that last stab in, you know, especially once I get upset, once my emotions start taking over, you know. But I'm learning because before, younger me would always, you know, there was there was no thinking. There was no oh, filter. Was there was just, I'm going to say what's going to hurt you the most right here, right now, because I was ruthless. Because I was a savage. Hurt. Hurt and people yes. hurt people. Yes. And that's the thing. That's when, because that's when you heal, you're not you're not going to be willing to engage in these full blown things like this. Because eventually, yes, you're going to fight for yourself. You're going to stand up for yourself. But eventually, you're going to say, "This is the old me." But my thing is, if somebody put like I used to be like that too, and when I was hurt and healed, unhealed. When people now that I'm healed and I'm still working to even improve that. Now, when I see somebody pulling me back to the old me, that's my sign. It's time to move on. Right, right, exactly. I don't want to be that person anymore. So, you know, that that brings us on to the next one where, so the second reason that you're, a sign that your relationship's coming to an end could be the, um, that you start bad-mouthing your partner to their family and friends. You know, for example, you got John Smith's best friend, Joe, 
hey, hey, Joe, can you, man, John every day is getting on my last nerve. He won't pick up after himself. I'm pretty sure he, he's just one lazy mother effer. He, you know, everything that he does is just so annoying. Things like that, right? The fact that you're talking bad yeah. about your spouse already shows that you're checked out of this relationship, you know? You, you're you you're supposed to be your partner's hype man, not your partner's, what, um, not, what, I was like, what's the opposite of Enemy. a hype man, you know? Because <laughs> Hater. Exactly. You're you're being their hater is what you're doing, and... That's hurtful when you're in a relationship with somebody who's supposed to be your... I've said that before. So many of y'all praying that God removes your enemies, but then y'all won't pray because you're scared he's going to move your man. Right. And, you know, some, something else, you know, that I want to say is if there's a difference between bad-mouthing your partner to your family and friends, and then there's a difference from... Venting to them and talking to right, them, you know, help. exactly. Because uh, who knows who knows your partner better than their friends and their and their family? You know what I mean. So sometimes you do. Oh man, you know, John's been having a, bad, a lot of bad days lately, um, and you know, stressing us both out. But I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix that. What you know, that's not bad mouthing your partner by saying that you're going through a hard time. That's that's saying that you need help. So, what is bad mouthing your partner is venting to your work husband that mm. you have a crush on. Uh, knowing, never ask somebody that you're attracted to advice about your relationship because if they have a mutual attraction, then if that is how these things, the number one place that people cheat is work. The number one work hour, the number one hours people cheat is work hours. And the number one way people do it is with their coworkers. <laughs> so the number one thing you don't want to do is go complain to your coworker that you're attracted to about your problems now if there's no chance that y'all could y'all ever gonna hook up then that's one thing to have somebody to confide in because you trust their opinion but you also got to understand before you ask for that advice you got to make sure it's somebody that has your best interest at heart absolutely you know that's when it comes to talking about or, or getting advice you know because just trying to talk to somebody and say that you're having a bad day with your spouse can can lead to a bad thing because as we say all the time <laughs> Any third person in your relationship is one too many. That's right. You know, so even if it's just coming for a friendly piece of ice, you done stuck somebody else in it. And sometimes people can't stop at advice. Sometimes people feel like they're helping you. Yeah. And so they'll take it into their own hands and go to your partner and say, hey, you know. And that's nothing, That that's literally inserting another person into this relationship. That's, that's how my mom lost her husband. She asked her best friend to go talk to my dad. And Ugh. well, they did. They started talking. This and... whole high school drama crap. Like, that's that's what that's what we used to do when we were in high school, people. Just like, oh, I think that guy's really cute. Will you go talk to him for me? What kind of crap is that? Like, you want me to steal your man? Because that's how that happens. Like, you, you send me to go talk to a man for you. <laughs> I'm not going to go over there and talk to him for you. I'm going to go over there and talk to him for me. And that's yeah. where the, that's where the passion came from Meridate for us to have a screening process yes. because we want couples that are committed to monogamy and marriage and their vows and not trying to destroy because there's enough people in your life the bitter people in your life that are, that are bitter and single the people that don't believe in love the people that cheat the people that play games the people that are swingers I mean there's so many temptations and things you could you could easily fall off your relationship just be careful who you get advice from uh, but uh, when you start bad mouthing them, why don't you try talking to them first? Exactly. And then if that doesn't work, go to God. That's who you go to. You go to God. You talk. You pray about it. Yes, have your few select confidants that you know have your back. But don't go make it a family affair because you're, here's what happens: as your family, when you're dogging them out, they're going to defend you and they're going to take your side. They are. Usually, right? Even, even if you're in the wrong. And then guess what happens? Y'all make up. Now they hate your man, and now you got to spend the next six months defending. Until exact. your next fight, and then you go tell them about that one. They're like, "See, we told you, keep people out of your business. Talk to a therapist. Talk and to a therapist." Let me tell you, this sounds like somebody who knows from firsthand experience. You know, because I, I know, I know from first. That's why I'm, I can chuckle at it because I'm over here like, <laughs> "Yeah, I've been down that road before. That's exactly. a dark, lonely road." Let me tell you. Hmm, unless you want to be like them, just be careful of the advice that you take. Uh, what's number three? Oh, am I? Okay, number three, you don't want to spend one-on-one -on -one time together and you prefer to do your own thing. 
you know, autonomy is good in a relationship. We talk about that it, during COVID. We talked about mm. how how people need autonomy. People need their mm. time alone, mm-hmm. and that's why relationship. They felt like that's why relationships were falling apart during COVID. Um, that's part of it. You definitely have to have your one on one time. But if you ever get to that place where you just you don't even want to do anything with them, you purposely make plans with your friends. You purposely Ooh, work late. That right at there. Night. She just took. The, I was literally waiting for her to finish so I can sit here and say, you know, those. When, when your coworkers ask you if you want to go to the bar instead exactly. after work, and you're like, sure. oh, I have a spouse at home, but sure, you know what, who cares? And then show up at, at 2 home. o'clock. Eh. Right, exactly, you know? Those are the kind of things right there that are literally like, you can tell that they're checked out. They don't want to be there no more. That's that's a physical checkout. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because really to me, there's two times of checkouts. You have the physical checkout where they physically have their foot out the door, where they're hardly ever home. You only see them when they're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the emotional checkout. You know, and emotional checkout's a whole different ball game. How long do you think your relationship is going to last if you never spend time together? The grass is green where you water it, people, okay? And the thing is, is stop taking your partner for granted. You just think a lot of you guys out there are so complacent and so uh, you just taking people for granted to a point that oh, they're always going to be there. Right, um, right. They, they can deal with it. No, the, I'm telling you, there is, the, people have options. There's 8 billion people on this planet. <laughs> So, so stop taking people for granted. Right, exactly. You know, that brings us uh, signs that your relationship is maybe coming to an end. Mm-hmm. And this is sign number four. They become more distant and their engagement uh, has decreased dramatically. So they're not going to talk to you anymore. Uh, the time that y'all would spend together watching TV, they're, they're, it's... It's I'm y'all don't watch y'all's show exactly. anymore. You, he, they watch their show, you watch your show. It's... Very cold, short answers. They're sleeping on the couch all the time. Right. Um, the, are you hungry? Yeah, sure, it's whatever. You know, th- those are the kind of, and that to me is what we call an emotional checkout. Mm-hmm. You know, because emotionally there's there's nothing there anymore. They don't feel anything for you. When you talk to them, they probably either regret or they are annoyed at your voice. Yeah. You know, they every time they even think about you, those are to me, those are emotional checkouts. They're always going out of town. Exactly. You, you know? know what I mean? So... The, yeah, it, it, the thing is, is that we're, it's all about focusing on appreciation and gratitude. Yes, you you can find things about people you hate, you know, but if you get 80% of something in a relationship, you're winning. But guess what psychology also says? 70% of the relationships that we fight, things we fight about in a relationship are never resolvable. Never. 70% are never resolvable. So if you go in understanding that part, you will... Uh, approach it a little bit different to realize, okay, sometimes you're going to have to agree to disagree. Amen. And the thing is, is if you become more distant and you're not spending time together, and the thing is, this can also come from when you feel like you're blue in the face. Have you ever said to somebody, oh. I feel like a broken record. I feel like I've told you a million times what I need, but then you don't want to hear it. So then when understanding becomes a situation where there is no understanding, you don't want to hear it, they're tired of saying it, nobody wants to talk about it no more. So right. then what happens? The relationship falls apart, and then you go their way, and they go their way. And on that point, you know, it's kind of like the same thing when you ask them to do something, and... They're, they're resentful about doing it. They don't want to do it, but then they end up doing it, and then they half-ass it. And exactly. So instead of taking, like, stress off of your plate, they just added more because you still got to go back and redo, redo everything it. anyway. Exactly. So to me, that's, that's another sign right there that they're just they're out the door. They don't want to yeah. be there anymore. And, and y'all might be surprised. One of the things people fight about is household chores. So, <laughs> you know, because then you get to like, I'm not doing the dishes anymore. Right. I'm, I'm not, not taking out the them. trash. Somebody's got to go and work and cook and clean. I mean, Both you know. Both people and, are now, though. And that's, that's the problem. And that's what I say. You know, like, it, it should be a 50-50 thing. Mind you, I understand some people don't know how to cook. Okay? But that's well, fine because if I'm going to go... <laughs> Just because my kitchen's small, I don't mean I don't know how to cook. Listen, some people may not know how to cook, but you know what? Then to me, if they can't cook, then they need to at least do all the dishes See, or order out. You know See, what I'm saying? Cooking to me is at the top of the list of my sexual the sexual experience you get with me. So it, it's at the top, right? I save some of those things, right? So this is how you can tell if I'm in love with you. If I try to feed you after sex. 
That's how you know I'm in love. If this I ain't is, trying to feed you, I don't give a damn about you. And ass. I'm the opposite. This is how you know I'm trying to get into your pants is because I'm feeding you. He's you know feeding what I'm saying? You like, first. <laughs> hey, he my mama two two always heavy, said the fastest way to a man's heart is it's through his stomach. stomach it's okay? true, though. And I know how to cook. It's like, true. there ain't been a single person to ever tell me that they don't like my cooking. Matter of <laughs> fact, people will come back and beg for my cooking. So, yeah, you are a great cook. I know. I can, you know, so my whole thing is, is like, if I'm really trying to impress you, mm-hmm. or I really want to get into your pants, or I really want you to be my boyfriend, I'm going to cook for you, you know, because that's that's how I get you really hooked. It's one know? of the things that people don't really talk about. Being When I was president of Future Homemakers of America, one thing, I think we need to have a modern Homemakers of America, because the, here's the deal, ladies, men still want a woman that can cook. I don't care what y'all say. I cannot tell you how many men I have came across in my whole life as a matchmaker, and they want a woman that can cook. I'm straight or gay, it don't matter. Or a man that can cook. They want somebody that can cook for them, uh, and it depends on the generation. So it, the millennials, probably not as much, but I know right. X, X, Generation X and above, <laughs> you need to be able to have some hot something on the stove. I mean, this is a fact, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it ain't about going out to eat. No, they want it you ain't. to cook. Right. I mean, still to Till this day, still till this day, which my mom's older, you know, she's got she's got some issues, health issues and everything, but she's still, she knows that when my dad is home for the week that he is home, oh, it is a home-cooked cook meal, meal every night. That's now, right. they may go out to eat during the day, but it is a home-cooked meal. Yes, that's right. Your you know, mom is right. That older generation, I'm yeah. telling you, that's that was one of the biggest yeah. ways you show respect to your man. Yeah, it, especially it since, is. especially since that generation was more homemakers. You know and what I'm th- saying? And I think, but I think it's also a Southern mentality thing. Mm. For me, if I know you like green tea, if I know you like Dr Pepper, if whatever, whatever you like, it's in my refrigerator. Right. I, I'm the kind of even in my office. I have a little refrigerator in my office. I feel like if I don't have a selection, like <laughs> some options for you, that's something tied into being Southern. We're very hospitable. We are. We are. Uh, but you know, ladies, listen. Take a cooking class with your man. Because the millennials out there, everybody should be, everybody's working. So Amen. Everybody, Amen. Y'all both go learn how to cook. I was going to say, you Y'all men. both go learn how to do the damn dishes. You yes, because I'm telling you. Take turns with laundry. Men, let me, let me give you a little secret here, okay? And something that women don't tell you very often. But women don't need to have sex to have an orgasm, okay? Sometimes just doing something different for them, like cooking them a hot meal, will oof, you will have them mm-hmm. wet okay let me tell you especially if their language love is acts of service so let me tell you men women love it when you spoil them and cook a dinner mm-hmm. for them and i'm not saying you gotta do it every night but especially like a once a month don't thing, tell like, me your pancakes are good right show, show me, me your, your pancakes, pancakes are, are good, good. Okay. thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us on to the next one signs that your relationship may be coming to an end uh, the person becomes more resentful and they express um, contempt. So, you know, they'll start like rolling their mm-hmm. eyes, acting superior, telling you how worthless you are, mm-hmm. things like that. I mean, honestly, the the second somebody starts rolling their eyes out at me, I'm already like, I can't, I can't not deal with you. I will shake you and tell you. Roll those damn eyes again, and they're going to be permanently stuck <laughs> to the back of your head. You saw my mom when I was little. Uh, listen, that's, where do you think I get it from? That was my mama you know, when I was little. But I'm going to tell you one of the, the number one things that you're, that's going to destroy your relationship, that's going to cause resentful resentment, is when you confide in somebody and they throw it in your face. That's number one. Right. Don't ever take somebody... For example, uh, I went through an abusive relationship before, and then I had somebody after that tell me, that's why you got beat. You see what I'm saying? You don't do that. You don't take what somebody, that's why you got raped. That's why you got left. That's why you were abandoned. Ugh. You don't take the most hurtful thing somebody can confide in you and then throw it in their face. And the number two thing that builds resentment is giving up your dreams. If you, oh, yeah. I always say this, young love has young love is great. I think young love is the one that's the hardest to get over. It's the one that will last a lifetime, right? Uh, but because you never experienced a heartbreak yet, so you're open 100% to love. You're giving 100%. But the thing is, is resentment is going to come in if you give up your dreams. Let's say you want to be a whatever, and then you just settle down and have kids. Uh, look at, what's her name with the little Wayne? Uh, uh, and then he married Toya. What's the girl he was with? Uh, Nevia. Shh. 
she she was going she was talking about that on social media how she met him and uh, she he moved her into wherever and said hey you know she kind of gave up her music career he got with somebody else now she's like he said he would take care of me and he didn't you know so, what I I'm, I'm gonna it's a little it's a little off topic but it's a little on topic I actually heard this segment the other day that kind of um made me chuckle a little bit they were saying that your ex should if they brought you into a certain lifestyle. Even after you break up, your ex should maintain that lifestyle. So, for example, oh, wow. if you was a, if you was a thought living on the streets and didn't have a place to live, yeah. and your boo went and got you the penthouse, a Benz, everything else, that just because you broke up, your ex should still go I, and I, take care of you. I think that's a load of crap. I think that's BS. Um, I think you should learn to have a skill outside of being on thank your back. Thank you, thank you. I just uh, if you got him from being on your back, uh, honey, listen, you need to get rid of that anyway, just because. Men date younger. So that, listen, women, you have an expiration date on your youth. <laughs> you have a expiration date on how hard you can pull them. And that's the thing that I don't want to hear. But trust me, trust and believe the things you pulled by the time you're 50, unless you want to pull Grandpa Moses, that's like pull Anna Nicole Smith, you're not always going to have the right option. So just just be careful with that. That's not the way to get anybody. It really isn't, you know. And that's, it just, it you know, it kind of made me think because that's, that is a way to have a lot of resentment, you know. Who and, you? And, right, like, exactly. Why? Like, because why you would gave him some good head? Exactly. You think that just because? I mean, if we broke up, everything that you had from me, my contacts, everything, it's done. Like, I'm cutting you That's off. That's stupid. You That's know what the I'm dumbest saying? Thing I ever just, heard in my life. I really did, but you know what? People actually give back diamond rings. You wouldn't even. Did you know what the protocol on that is? What? Yeah. What is the protocol if you get engaged and? So... If you get engaged and you, whoever breaks it up, so if he let's say he cheats on you, uh -huh. you keep it. If he if you cheat on him, you give it back. So it's really about who was wrong. So and it really what if it's a mutual agreement? On, and it depends on what. It, then it depends on what your agreement in that situation. Because I was right? like, because sometimes people break up just because they I mean, they find out they're not right for each other. What's, I mean. It just depends, right? So it, right. it just depends on who's at fault, who initiated the breakup. Um, and then the, the last two is... So number num seven, right? Yeah, number seven. Number seven. You don't, You just don't feel the same way anymore. You just, you know, you're just tired of it. And it, you just you just kind of lose interest in it. And you yeah. find yourself dreaming of a new person or new opportunities. Or you start getting sexy again. I was going to say, you know, something that kind of, you know, brings you there is... Um, even like when you're having sex, you're like picturing other people, you know, it, it, those are things, you know, or hey, something that they didn't put on here that should be on here is they lose um, interest in your sex life. They stop having so much sex with you, you know, oh, like one. that's that's one of the ways you can definitely tell that your relationship's coming to an end. Is it, and then some people be no banging it out all the way to the end, though. I mean, I mean, it's true, but you can tell yeah. the difference. You know, you can tell yeah. the difference between when it's because three minutes or thirty. Exactly. You know, you know when somebody's <laughs> checked out during sex. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because don't yeah. get me wrong, it's always doggy Mi style. Yeah, sex is one of those <laughs> things that anybody, no matter what they're feeling, can usually have. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And and get off usually. Yeah. Usually, I mean, there's there's certain exceptions, but you can tell when somebody's not there, when somebody's checked out. Yeah. And so that kind of brings us to number eight, which is the biggest one of them all. And you know, they just say, "F it," they give up. They don't want to do it anymore. F Ever it. have a you, you just have a, an argument one day or a slight disagreement, and it's just you I know what? Up. I'm done. I'm out of here. Yeah. I mean, I personally, that's my number one. That's that's my number one thing. When I'm done, that's how you know. I'm always just like, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm just, I'm just one, done. One thing, I, as I've grown through my self-love journey, one thing I had to do is uh, when you're unhealed, it's going to be natural. You're going to try to pick fights with people to try to get them to prove they love you because right. you're insecure. But so I challenge you, until you're completely healed, try to bite your tongue. Try not to say F it. Try not to say I give up unless you really are at that point because... Be and, and you can be at that point, but just be at that point that you're genuinely ready to let go. It doesn't mean right. it can't work out, let go of the outcome. But when you get to that point of saying "eff it," mean it. Yeah, mean because because they're not gonna take you serious. And not only that, but once you say it, it's hard for somebody to unhear that. That's right. You know, once I hear that you've given up, then I I you lost trust. You know, because uh, knowing that you gave up. To me, tells me that you're open to cheating and you're not, open, you know, yeah. doing other things that w we shouldn't be in a relationship for in the first place. Exactly. So right there, if somebody's telling you, you know, I give up, that to me that you're losing trust. So once you say it, you better be ready to go because you're you're gonna have a lot of work to do to yes. get it back. 
Guys, we have a great show, a great week lined up for y'all. Later yeah, we in the week, do. Uh, we have a superstar Hollywood producer coming in. Hey. One of the co-producers for Deaf Comedy Jam, Bob Sumner's joining us. We have celebrity comedian Billy D. Washington and Al D. Freeman joining us on, on the Wednesday show. So we're super excited about that. We got some tough love for y'all tomorrow, though. Yeah, always. Be ready. You know how I do <laughs> on Tuesdays. My favorite day of the week. I get to drop all them. Truth bombs. And are you single? We want you on our sexy single sofa on Thursday. Yes. Yeah, so make sure you guys, if you want to, if you're single, you're looking for a match made in Houston. Yes. Give us a call at the Matchmaker Hotline. Hit us up on the Amber Neal Show Facebook page. DM us. I'll Ooh. get back to you right away. Speaking of Facebook page. Exactly. I was getting there. And if you're too shy to get on camera and come sit on our sexy single sofa, come over to our sexy single event that we're having. We're having speed dating, glow in the dark speed dating along with Musical Love that Chairs. Is. That'll be this Thursday, starting at 7 p.m., right here at the Boss of Houston Network. If you want more information, go check out our Amber Neal Show Facebook page. We have the event live. You can get tickets there. Tickets are only $49, $49. and that includes food. And BYOB, guys. So doors open at 6. You can come get your food. The event, the activities start at 7. And for more information, go to the Amber Neal Show page. And... And, and for more information, how you can be involved in everything we have going on, and we're looking for friends of the show, go to AmberNeal.com. And since it is, of course, Merry Day Monday for all you couples out there yes. who are looking for things to do, we are trying to go and put the date back in your marriage. So we're giving you 30 to 50 events every month. Those are physical, in-person events. Along with August, we're going to be launching our virtual events. So we're going to be starting off kind Yay. of slow on the virtual, but... The more people we got signing up for the virtual, the faster we'll build it, the faster it'll come. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all guys are, you couples are looking for things to do, we have, today is Margarita Monday, tomorrow is Strengthen Your Relationship, and Wednesday is going to be one of our favorite Paint nights, Paint night. night. So, you know, we have all kinds of events coming up this week, so if you want to check them out, go to MarryDate.com. All you couples out there, MarryDate.com. That's M-A-R-R-I-D-A-T-E.com. All right, guys, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Peace. Meridate, Houston's first private social club for couples. Chris and I met on MySpace. Uh, we started doing music together first, and then we became really good friends. And we were friends for about five years. And then we started dating each other in 2008. Uh, by February 2009, we were engaged. And by November 2009, we were married. Um, we have three children together that we have raised. And uh, we have traveled the world together and um, eaten some of the best food in the world. And collectively have just built up an amazing network of friends and family and a circle of people that we just love and care about. And they continue to motivate and we continue to motivate them. We build our energy on our relationship. Um, with the energy that we can give to other people and the effect that we can have on other people's lives. And we're going on 12 years strong this year through all the obstacles and the goods and the bads. We're still together and we're here to share our story. Join Meridate today by visiting www.meridate.com.